Hi everyone. Welcome or welcome back to Novel Idea. My name is Dia. That's Poppy. Say hi. Can you say hi? <laughs> Today I am going to be doing a tag and this is called the personal rules for reading tag. If you see me looking down, it's because I have the, the questions in front of me. This tag is an original tag created by MJ at Reading This Life. And I was tagged by Erin at Erin Go Read. So if you don't follow Erin, you're missing out. The first prompt is, do you strive to read every day? And if yes, do you do anything different or special to make time within your day? And if no, why not? So I do strive to read every day. Um, I would feel very weird if I was not reading. So I try to read every day and I don't have to really do anything special. I am an early riser. Um, I get up early, I exercise, I have my cup of coffee, I do my devotions, and then I read. And so I don't have to really do anything very special in order to make sure that I am reading every single day. So even if I have to go somewhere or do something outside of the house, I tend to put an audiobook on in the car. The second prompt is, do you always stay within your favorite genres or do you experiment with reading different genres or subgenres? I stay pretty much in my wheelhouse and that's simply because with as old as I am and Things, I feel like I, I kind of know myself pretty well. Do you DNF? Yes. <laughs> if yes, what was the last book you DNF'd and the reasons why? Uh, last book I DNF'd. So I think the last book I DNF'd was a book called The Milky Way. And this is a fairly new release. And it was supposed to be a, an, an autobiography. The Milky Way was supposed to be telling us its story. And when I started reading it, the initial part of the book was about the person writing the book. But then when it got to the part where the Milky Way was trying to tell its story, it seemed very um, flippant and, and like it was being um, snobby, kind of, which is weird uh, to say that about a galaxy. But nonetheless, the, uh, that's the way that the author wrote it. Um, and that's the way it was coming across to me. And I just wasn't in the mood for it. So I DNF'd that one. Number three, or number four, excuse me. Do you like to read challenging books? If yes, what draws you to them? And why do you, and if not, why do you avoid them? So I do love to read challenging books. Um, anything that makes me need to dig a little deeper anything that makes me need to look look up words, um, to find a cadence or a rhythm to the way the story is being told. Um, I like being challenged in those ways. I don't mind large books. I, I just read one that was 1,100 pages. So it doesn't bother me to read a large book. So that's not the challenge. The challenge is going to be, is it going to make me think bigger? Is it going to make me have to research? 
is it going to make me have to uh, learn new vocabulary? Those are the challenges that I like. So if a book challenges me in that way, yes, I love reading challenging books. Math or science, probably not. If it has to do with language and history and those kinds of things, challenging, yes. Um, number five, Greg's question. Do you read books that have been banned by local authorities? I don't pay attention. I read what I want and I have no idea if it's been banned by someone else or not. I just read, sorry. Don't, I can't answer that one. Uh, Criminali's question. Do you read books by authors whose views you disagree with all the time? And, and that would be, I guess, another way that a book would be challenging. So yes. Steve Donahue's question, do you clear your mind of preconceptions and biases before you start a new book or do you go in with axes to grind? Um, uh, usually the only preconceptions that I have when I'm going into a book are what I have heard from people who are reviewing the books. Um, I don't know that I am going in with preconceptions erased or open-minded because I'm probably going in with the mindset of who it is that I trust. But yeah, I'm probably going in with all kinds of preconceptions. Oh, Steve's got two on here. Okay, so another question from Steve Donahue. Do you, re do you recommend books if you end up really liking them? And if so, what form does that recommendation take? I recommend books to people all the time and not necessarily ones that I really like. If I've read a book that I didn't care for, but it sounds like a book that somebody else would like, I will tell them about it. I mean, if I like a book, I'm not quiet about it. Uh, I usually talk to my girl more than anyone else. I have homeschool kids and families that still uh, will talk to me about books and and I do that also. So I guess that's kind of recommendations. Number nine, Bill's question. What was the last book you did recommend? And was there a specific reason for that book? Do people come to you regularly for, for book recommendations? So I don't know what you mean by regularly, but probably at least four times a year, maybe three or four times a year, I will uh, have people come to me for recommendations. Um, as far as what, la what book I last recommended was, um, I was talking with a homeschool family and they, the one of the girls was reading The Giver by Lois Lowry. And uh, they were saying that they didn't really care for the ending of the book. And I said, you do realize that that is a quartet. That's, it's, a, it's a series of four books. And they were like, what? No, I had no idea. So I got to tell them about the other books in the quartet. That was the last one. Another question from Bill. Uh, what book have you had the most success in recommending? A Gentleman in Moscow, hands down. Everybody that I've recommended it to has loved it. Micah Cummins' question is, do you take notes or annotate while you read? It depends on what I'm reading. If I am reading nonfiction, yes. 
uh, I write in the margins, I underline, I highlight, I do all of that kind of thing uh, often in nonfiction. So if, if thrift books ever got a hold of any of my nonfiction books, they would at, have to sell them at only a good <laughs> reading because I would have annotations in there. Kim's question, do you shush, eye roll, or give the hand to anyone who interrupts your reading? Yes, <laughs> just plain and simple. My husband, he interrupts me constantly. And so I do kind of give him the <sighs> kind of thing. And <laughs> Poppy knows that sound. <sighs> your little ears perk up. Erin's question, did someone or something inspire you to be a reader? If yes, tell us about it. Yes. I think that, and I have answered this in a previous tag, I, I believe. I had a very good friend when I was young and whose mom was a reader and a very diverse, very uh, eclectic reader. Every time we would be at their house, would be telling us about the book that she was reading or about the book that she had just finished and asking us our thoughts and opinions about some of these subjects that were happening in these books. And I loved listening to her talk about all these wide variety of things. And so she would always ask what I was reading and she sat very attentively and really did want to know, what are you reading? What, what's fascinating you about the book that you're in right now? all of those kinds of things. And it made me always want to have something to discuss with her. It made me always want to have an answer. And so I began to pick up books on my own as a result of Cassandra Tate was her name. And then I am supposed to add a question to this. That's what this tag is. That's the way that MJ set it up. So my question that I wanna to add to the tag is, do you have a favorite perspective when you are reading? In other words, do you like the first person, I, we perspective? Do you like the second person of the you perspective? Or do you like the perspective of the third person in the he, she, they perspective? And that's my question. All right, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today. Like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.